did you come out to here? I got to read the book. Oh, come on, you want it. That's a good question. So you ask me a nice question, maybe you'll get the book. <laughs> <laughs> I have a no, um, book. Sure, so, okay, what, what so what is your, what is your family? No, so I, I think I can tell you. So I came out to my mom, it was pretty easy, because I'm uh, quite an anti-climax, mm -hmm. because I was seeing someone at that time, and I was in my early 20s, and I came out to her, I built it up in my mind and this thing, and I was like, something I have to tell you, I think I might be gay. At which point she was like, you might be, or are you sure? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I think I'm sure, and she's like, you think, are you sure? And I was like, fine, and she's like, okay, so what do you want for dinner? <laughs> and it was such a, because, you know, and I was like, that's it? Because I kind of expected her to, to, to throw some tantrums and have some drama. I worked myself up for it, but it was so matter of fact that it really didn't matter. Um, but with my, and then, of course, I had to come out to my dad because I figured he would deal differently. I came out to him when I was studying. I was in grad school at MIT and had organized uh, the first ever South Asian LBG Film Festival on the East Coast at that time. It was in 2004. I don't think they've had any since then. Um, and the BBC had interviewed me at that time and it was on the BBC website. So before other people would call him and tell him, I had to call him and tell him. Um, and that was, that was an interesting conversation. Um, but, you know. Some people take more time, some people take less. I think the point when you, when you do stuff like this is to, is to say that I'm shared, there's something about my life that I want to share with you and just state it very matter of factly and not really be apologetic or seek permission of any kind because it really wasn't like that. I just wanted to share who I was. So it was, it was as far as things go, it was pretty good. Something that uh, Salvatore had, had mentioned, you were, you were talking about uh, connections and networks. Um, a question for each of you. Um, with the work that you're doing, I'm, I'm, um, I guess I'm hoping that maybe you are not the only person in the world doing the kinds of work that you are doing, and that, that maybe you are aware of uh, others in other parts of the world that are doing making similar efforts uh, along what you are trying to do, and wh where are these uh, Where are these people, where are these organizations that you would like to connect with yourself, or maybe you already are? What's the first? For the kind of work that, he, that you specifically are doing. For example, I have a, a really, one simple, one simple answer and one uh, more complicated question. The simple answer is that uh, Luckily, there are more and more people doing wonderful things. Huh? Uh, luckily, we are ever more connected uh, and uh, we are able to uh, speak with the people from uh, uh, other parts of the world and uh, so many collaboration and uh, action and common action and shared action with the common ethics uh, uh, are happening more and more. So this is a good, good news. Uh, I don't know when it will have uh, wide effects, changing governments, changing now, but uh, it's happening for sure. This is uh, one positive message that uh, I feel that I can uh, give. Okay, so many collaborations are happening uh, all over the world. Okay, so it will take some time to change really radically things uh, uh, because obviously in the world there are many disparities, there are many things that are not right. There is the environment problems, there is uh, pollution, there is uh, war, there is uh, violence, there is uh, all kinds of things, but uh, many things that are really incredibly positive are happening all over the world. So, who knows? Uh, now, if we, now, if we keep on going. And uh, um, the other thing, the more complicated answer is that, uh, uh, is um, for me, according to, at least by me, uh, is that. Uh, None of us are exempt uh, from uh, trying to do this, uh, trying to make these good things happen. For example, uh, if you want, uh, and I do uh, allow me to do a little uh, self-promotion here, uh, we are, uh, no, because I think it, it might be important, uh, we are bringing uh, uh, these kinds of projects, uh, uh, the human ecosystem type projects, here in New Haven. Uh, so what, what does it mean? We're bringing in New Haven, uh, 
uh, uh, some uh, platforms for expression and action and coordinated actions between citizens to which uh, we can observe the human network of the city and learn how to do things together. Huh? Uh, and so we will make uh, workshops uh, uh, on this. Uh, we, will, we will teach people, whether they are children, uh, elderly people, uh, adults, uh, young adults, or uh, what, even the students at Yale, <laughs> you know, uh, how to use these technologies to do things, uh, to do, I hope, positive things uh, for the community, for ourselves, for the things we care about, for our diversity, or for our identity, for everything we wish for. Okay, so uh, nobody of us is exempt of doing this. So we really should do that and we really should look out. Uh, so watch out for the human ecosystem in New Haven. <laughs> There's a question back uh, I have a question from Nandita. Uh, India has this problem of caste, uh, which, uh, you know, like the United Nations calls it an hidden upper third. And consciously or subconsciously, almost like 70 to 80 percent of the population, Hindu population, is Shudras and they are discriminated. You being a media person, um, media in India, visual media in India doesn't really address this issue very much. It's very reluctant to come up with this thing. How do you find, uh, uh, you know, is there any anti caste trends in the media uh, in India or anything like that? Stand up. Uh, those of you probably know, but some of you may not, casteism or caste is a kind of a division that has has historically been there in the Hindu society, which is, it was overlapping with the work you did. So if you were a cobbler, or you were a, you know, a washerman, or you were a carpenter, you had a particular caste. Like everywhere else, the people who did more literary work, like the priests, you know, the people who take care of God and religion, and similarly in India, we have the Brahmins, the, the Pandits, so to say. They were the highest caste, then were the warriors, and then were the ones who did all the accounting. So these are the traditions. Within each caste, there are many divisions. And again, like everywhere else, you know, the class and the caste, um, but this is not everywhere, but caste and class also overlap, which means the lowest castes are also the poorest of people. And Everywhere in the world, the poorest of people are most disfranchised. Nobody's really talking about them. And that happens in the media as well, because the media is mostly governed by powerful people, people who have had opportunities to be educated. So for instance, I may not have, not have consciously said, I do not want to study with lower caste. I may say that I don't care about caste at all. Right? I only got to know my caste, in fact, when I was in college, because luckily my parents never talked about it, it wasn't important in my growing up years. So I was very fortunate that I wasn't conscious of what caste I am and where do I, where am I in the hierarchy. But it was easy for me because I wasn't in the lowest hierarchy so I never had to care for. But you ask a person of the lowest hierarchy, would he or she know? They don't have a choice. So when I grew up in the school, in the college, in the university that I studied, automatically there were very few people of the lowest caste. Now, I can say I didn't choose to be like that, but because they never made it to the schools that I went to, they never made it to the colleges I went to. So in some sense, it's a kind of racism that exists in other parts of the world. You just, there isn't level playing field. So you just keep sort of throwing them on the side. They keep getting to be more and more marginalized. So while we do talk about it occasionally, we, the Dalits, as we call it, the lower castes, People, they've never, they've never really been part of the mainstream and the mainstream has never really cared enough. I've done a few films where I've played Dalit characters and it's been interesting because I've spoken to some Dalit activists and, and I think when we talk about women and violence, I remember once being on a panel on women and violence, we somehow don't realize that when there is a, a Dalit issue and women and violence, it's a whole different thing. There is much more of atrocity, much more of uh, sort of segregation, much more of discrimination that we can ever imagine. So I think it is something that we can't wish it away. The more we deal with it, uh, you know, the more it will be on the forefront. But but it's still a long way before we can truly call ourselves a sort of a casteless or at least a society which will bring everybody and be more inclusive. Um, this is for Nandita. So
So last week, I'm getting my master's in women's studies, and last week I wrote a paper on global feminism. And so I'm just wondering, from your perspective, how do you see um, feminists in India differing from feminists in America? So just what's your perspective on the differences? Yeah. Um, well, there have been people here that we have also looked up to, and uh, you know, but feminists in every country is also very local, but it's also very cultural. So the Indian feminist movement was almost in the 60s that it started. And it almost got a bad name. Like even today, we say, oh, don't try to be a feminist, which almost meant like you're trying to be an anti-men, or it was trying to be, you know, sort of, as we used to say, sort of flat flying feminist. But increasingly, there is a greater awareness that is growing. And people are understanding that feminism is not something that is only for the women. It's for a society. And it, it's like saying that if the environment was taken care of, then there wouldn't be any environmentalists. So we're all probably feminists by default. If there was, we would all want to probably be more humanists, you know, but, but unfortunately, the situation is not so equal and therefore every man and a woman ought to be a feminist and it's definitely not a bad word. But in India, it still sort of has this, uh, it, the word itself, sometimes the word is heavier than what it's talking about. So I think sometimes there are, there are women or there are people who would like to distance themselves from the word feminism, or fe being a feminist, yet they are part of the movement. Because there are so many nameless, faceless women who have sort of crossed the borders, who have done different things. I mean, today if I can stand here and talk to you like this, or I can wear jeans, I mean, somebody must have in India first time said, I'm going to wear jeans, I'm going to you know, drive a car, I'm going to work. Because otherwise, in any traditional patriarchal society, it's not easy to you know, cross those borders. And they are not always big, huge names that we can talk about. They are very ordinary, simple people who we don't even know. Who do we owe this freedom to? But they have opened the doors for people like us to be able to do things that we are doing, and that's the responsibility that we have. I mean, can we say that we are very equal? I mean, I work a lot on women's empowerment. And I always say that this is not a word you can use in your past tense. I can never say I am empowered. I'm constantly in the process of empowering myself. And I think we are so deeply conditioned to sort of take the lower end of the stick. And I don't think this is only in India. I did a play called Between the Lines. In fact, we're planning to screen that here as well, which is about the subtle inequalities in couples, in educated, affluent couples. And when I did a screening at, in DC recently, and I was kind of saying, well, this happens more in India. And I was surprised the number of American women came up to me and started sharing the stories. I mean, of course, one knew that it was there, but I couldn't believe to the extent they could relate to. So there might be subtle differences in countries or within one country, but I think largely the issues of women have still remained as sort of a feminist or a women's movement as opposed to it being a people's, a society's movement. And I think when it, ha when it, when the whole society claims it to be their issue and their movement, will those things change? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I had a question for Salvador regarding the dreams, the kind of, of dreams, because I wondered, are these dreams that come upon people who go to sleep, they dream unexpecting, not expecting to have a dream, and it may be a nightmare, it may be who knows what, or dream in the sense of wishing for something positive, like it's my dream that someday I will whatever it may be. What kind of dreams are you thinking about? Absolutely. Actually, we collect both. Um, so imagine, uh, uh, and there are a lot of them. I, uh, I, um, I started this, uh, this project uh, of uh, One Million Dreams because uh, I found that uh, there are many people who use the social network to tell their dreams they had at night. So there are many people who wake up uh, uh, in the morning and say, hello guys, folks, uh, you know what, this dream, uh, this night I dream, I dreamt this, blah, blah, blah. It was horrible, wonderful, incredible. It made me think about this and that. And so there are lots of people who, uh, um, who tell their dreams using social networks. And, and it's very interesting. Uh, and also uh, wishes. Uh, so we collect both. We obviously keep them uh, separate. And both are very interesting. 
uh, wishes for you know the 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 things that uh, uh, people wish for, so the desires of people. But also the dreams uh, are uh, uh, may seem like uh, less less important. The, the night dreams uh, may seem, but they are very important because uh, uh, if uh, one knows how to read them, there are uh, symbols in dreams. There are uh, uh, connections in dream. There are uh, uh, environments, contexts uh, in uh, dreams that have a very specific meaning and there are also cross-cultural, so they are very interesting, uh, also studied between and across cultures, uh, and, and, and this is very interesting. Uh, uh, and the most, in, the most interesting thing of all is uh, uh, studying the, uh, uh, them as they evolve in time uh, and in geography. So imagine how important it is uh, to understand uh, how people's dream of, of the two kinds change uh, as, uh, uh, as the times change, you know? as uh, the world goes on, as new wars appear, as new crises appear, as, uh, as the economy changes, uh, you know, there will be uh, dreams uh, and wishes uh, of a different kind. And it's very important understanding these symbols. Thank you, Salazar. Uh, I have a question about your map of the United States. Why was it that you showed uh, concentrations in some areas, but then nothing in, in other areas? And where do you put the concentrations? It didn't seem to go along with uh, population density or cultural differences. How did you, how did you um, come across this? So the, the, the last one you mean? Yeah, yes, the last one. Um, sure it's States. basically the map of the places in which people have used social networks to express their dreams. It's interesting that uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it, it does a little, but not precisely. Uh, it's interesting how it changes uh, from uh, um, uh, in regards to you no. Know, density of population and things that, and other statistics like that. It would be really interesting also to, uh, uh, to understand in what uh, context, and we do that, uh, people uh, you know, express more of what they desire, of what they dream, because uh, you, know, you can find uh, interesting examples of uh, maybe uh, more, uh, 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 more uh, um, free uh, neighborhoods or uh, more uh, 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 more free societies uh, or maybe even uh, schools that are uh, different or maybe families uh, uh, which are, so it's very interesting uh, studying uh, where these dreams come from uh, or where this expression of dreams and wishes come from it's very very interesting uh, because uh, you know it's another type of data statistics uh, are uh, uh, at the same time it's very useful but also very dangerous uh, so for example if I say that uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Americans have, uh, on average, they have uh, one and a half legs. Uh, uh, of course, it's a useful information, uh, because it means that uh, someone will have uh, three legs, someone uh, uh, will have uh, no legs, and uh, you know, there's many people in between. Uh, uh, but uh, two legs also, sometimes even two legs. Um, and... Uh, 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 and uh, but if I design a world uh, for people with one half legs, uh, mm, so if I design a stair staircase uh, for uh, uh, people with one half legs, no one is happy because uh, the uh, the um, average, for example, and this is true for statistics, is uh, useful, but it actually doesn't exist. Okay, it, it's uh, it's an approximation. It's uh, no, it's a statistics, as the word says. Huh? But actually it doesn't exist. And so one, it's useful for government because, okay, if uh, I need to know the sum of uh, all the legs in the United States, the, the, uh, the statistics is useful. But it's also not uh, the truth. Uh, because the truth is that I have two legs, she has two legs, uh, the other person might have one leg. Uh, for some reason, uh, the other. So the truth is that uh, uh, is uh, punctual. Is uh, no, it's, it's human. It's human bodies, uh, uh, and dealing with bodies is different than dealing with statistics. Uh, uh, and so we are uh, hypothesizing a world in which we are able to deal with bodies. Uh, 
not uh, with statistics. And uh, the fact is uh, that the, the, the happy news is uh, that uh, uh, now we have uh, the possibility to do, the, to do that. Uh, because uh, technologies are becoming cheap and, and uh, available and accessible, and so we can deal with bodies, with human beings, uh, uh, not with statistics. And that's very good, that's very interesting, that can bring lots of change uh, for diversity, for uh, uh, the, the people who, have, uh, who don't have the same uh, possibilities in life and in our society. That's very interesting.